And next to the podium is an 18-year-old Jewish queer activist. Her favorite color is red, her favorite animal is an elephant, and she often writes and draws things without any clue what they mean. Please welcome Maggie Mae Harder. Hello, hello. Um, full disclosure, I'm a little bit sick. Uh, this happened literally two hours ago. Uh, so I'm gonna do a little exercise. I'd like everyone to breathe in with me and lower your expectations. <laughs> Wow, I really set the bar high for myself, huh, okay. Uh, well, I hope you uh, enjoy this, and if not, uh, nobody likes a whiner. <laughs> I am a newly minted adult about to talk about love and growing up for the next six minutes and 35 seconds. So if you'd rather not hear a mostly teenager talk about what may be mostly teenager things, I'd advise that you begin to play your favorite daydream in your head now. <laughs> Being a new adult and graduating has made next quite a prominent theme in my life. I've found there are two types of next. The logistical next, university, residence, scholarships, and the emotive next, who am I and what does it all mean? I figured I'd break down the ladder. It has three parts. First, I'm a solid 88% lesbo. <laughs> Queer for short. As anyone involved in LGBTQ plus activism will tell you, sexuality is fluid. Therefore, my attraction of boys should be fluid. The word I prefer is fleeting. <laughs> I'm also a passionate feminist. Fighting for social justice is something I plan on devoting my life to particularly through politics, as I'll be studying public affairs and policy management at Carleton next year. I'm trying to flesh out this 20-second slide, but there's a reason I'm studying policy next year. I gotta learn. <laughs> Finally, I love to analyze things, particularly things that don't make any sense. Often, I'll write random poetry or make weird paper crafts as a mechanism to analyze a bigger, illogical concept, which is almost always love. Love seems to house all three of these emotive necks. Recently, I had to move on from a girl. I've fallen in love twice. Each time it was in 30 days, and each time it was never the wrong person, just the wrong time and place. But my personal philosophy is that nothing is good or bad, it just is. So instead of dwelling, I analyzed. I found in a lot of discussion about LGBTQ plus things, the foundation of being queer is missed. What is it actually like to fall in love and get your heart broken and move on as a queer person? I owe my respects to the gay rights movement as without it, I couldn't talk about this. I believe that love is love is a myth. Not to say that any love is unequal, but that it's different. The heartbreaks and moving on are different too especially to fall in love and be heartbroken by girls as a girl. There is a unique relationship between empowerment and vulnerability. Whenever I've had a bad dating run-in with a boy, I can say, I'm an independent woman, and then move on with little trouble. I'm not empowered by men like I am by women. I ask myself, how can I be empowered by women and simultaneously fall in love with them and be heartbroken by them? The first time I fell for a girl and had to move on, I found myself trying to use feminism as I had with boys before. But this time, I couldn't say, I don't need men, because she wasn't a man. I need women in a way that makes loving them and being hurt by them uniquely intimate. I was fully in love with this girl. We met when I was in New York for a month last summer. She lived in New Jersey and I lived in Calgary. It was logistical stuff that ended it. And again, when I had to move on from a girl this spring, it was right person, wrong time, all over again. So to recap, twice I'm falling for a girl and getting hurt by a girl, which is unavoidably more intimate because I'm supposed to be always lifted up by other women. Then the heartbreak has nothing to do with the person. And though this isn't a unique experience, it was entirely new to me. What's next? 
how do I process this? Well, I had to tell myself that I would meet new people. Coming home from New York, I was entering my senior year, and now I'm going to university in Ottawa in three months. I kept forgetting that the world really wasn't so small. In my analysis, I also decided the world is too big for a one true love. How many soulmates do we have? Do we meet them all? Have we already met some? How many of them will we meet but at the wrong time? Are we restricting ourselves from some or forcing a soulmate on someone who isn't one? One day I started one of my nonsensical crafts and drew a bunch of tiny shapes. The figures represent soulmates. Are the soulmates grouped by color, shape, proximity? Are they meant to be where they are? The sentences are words exchanged the day I got my heart broken. Because no good analysis is good without external sources, I ran all this by my mom. She backed up my deferring love theory and my soulmate theory. She told me that when I find who I'm supposed to spend my life with, she says it will feel like I will belong wherever they are. Additionally, I had to redefine my relationship with feminism. I realized I was using it as a tool for my own emotional satisfaction. I had to ask myself, to what extent is my use of feminism purely self-serving? When are emotional satisfaction and self-empowerment the same thing? And when are they not? So as you can see, I'm a very emotional teenager that thinks about very emotional things, going through very big changes all at once. I only turned 18 five days ago. <laughs> I'm very new at this. Trying to sort out love and feminism and my future all at once is a lot. Evidently, I don't have any of the answers. I just ask a lot of questions. And questions open up new questions, and eventually I'm stuck in such a heart over mind, mind over heart conundrum that the only solution is to listen to Fleetwood Mac for an hour. <laughs> As much as I know my logistical next, I don't know what's in store for who I'm going to be and how I'm going to feel about it. I'm scared, but I'm okay with being scared because it think, I think it means that I'm in love with letting myself change. I'm just growing up. Woo!